This video will discuss the functional forms for how gas particles interact as a function of distance. So when we looked at the virial equation of state, our compressibility factor Z was equal to pressure times molar volume over gas constant times temperature, which is equal to 1 if it's an ideal gas. But if it's a non-ideal gas, we have this Taylor series in molar volume plus the second virial coefficient divided by V bar plus third virial coefficient divided by V bar squared, etc., etc. And we said that these virial coefficients depend on the interactions between particles. If a particle is ideal, there is no interaction and there is no virial coefficient, but most gases are non-ideal and do have some virial coefficient. So this virial coefficient I said could be obtained by this type of expression here the form not being particularly important, just noting that we can compute it if we know the potential energy between particles as a function of distance, which was minus 2 pi Avogadro's number times integral from 0 to infinity e to the minus potential energy as a function of distance divided by Boltzmann constant times temperature minus 1 times the distance squared integrated over r this U of R, as I said, was the potential energy between particles. So we know that the potential energy is positive at short distances because they take up space and repel each other. At, at intermediate distances, they attract one another through kind of van der Waals interactions. And at long distances, they don't interact. Where R, as I said, was this distance between particles. So what are some of the functional forms that we see for these various uh, for these various models of how gas particles interact. Well, firstly, we would have for the ideal gas, we would have U of R equals zero. Ideal gas particles do not interact. They do not take up space. They're completely independent of one another. So if you put a zero here, E to the z minus zero is one. One minus one is zero. So this whole integral goes to zero. So the third and fourth and every virial coefficient after this they have more complicated expressions than this, but they all depend on these things that look like e to the minus this over kt. So if, if u is always 0, this term always ends up being 0 and the integral goes away. So ideal gases have no potential energy and thus no virial coefficients. They always behave exactly ideally. If you want to account for the fact that molecules have some finite size that they take up space, you can use what's called a hard sphere model. So there the potential is zero. If the distance is greater than some threshold, sigma, the effective molecular radius, and if the distance is less than sigma, then the potential energy is infinite. So basically the particles are restricted to not be within sigma of each other. So that places a minimum distance, so this is how much volume the particles occupy. So at short distances, you have e to the minus infinity, which is going to be 0, which gives you a minus 1 here. So you get a, you get a virial coefficient where this integral is negative, multiply times a negative out there, you get a positive value for the virial coefficient. So having this hard sphere model taking up space, the effect of that is going to be that your compressibility factor goes up as your molar volume increases as you're responding to this occupied space from each particle. And that becomes a bigger deal as your molar volume gets smaller and smaller. Okay, if you want to account for that and the fact that particles attract one another at intermediate distances, we can use what's called a square well potential, where again you have the hard sphere model once you're inside the distance sigma, but then you have a value lambda which tells you how far they attract one another. So at lambda sigma, that's where they stop attracting one another. At sigma, they start attracting one another. And in between, in between, they attract one another by epsilon. So minus epsilon being a negative potential energy. So a negative energy gives you a positive value up in the numerator here, gives you a positive value in here. Multiply that times a negative, gets you a negative. So the net effect of the attractions is to decrease the virial coefficient decrease the compressibility factor, decrease the effective molecular volume. So the bigger epsilon gets, or the bigger lambda gets, the more this virial coefficient goes down and our, vir and our compressibility factor and our molar volume go down.
whereas the bigger sigma gets, the more uh, we have occupied volume and the more it's going to go up. So square well can have both a negative or positive value of the virial coefficient depending on the relative values of sigma, lambda, and epsilon. For a more realistic model of what these particles do as a function of distance, we have what's called the Leonard-Jones potential, often called a 612 potential. That's where the potential as a function of distance is a kind of Taylor series in 1 over r, where the terms we include are r to the, 1 over r to the 12th and 1 over r to the 6th. So the potential is 4 times the value epsilon times quantity sigma over r to the 12th minus sigma over r to the 6th, 612, these two exponents. So at the minimum energy distance, that's negative epsilon. At r equals sigma, the potential is 0. And then similarly to a square well, we have terms of positive and negative regions in the potential surface. So depending on the values of sigma and epsilon, we can get varying values for what the virial coefficients are in the Leonard-Jones model. The r to the sixth is a pretty realistic model for how they behave in the long range. That's how uh, the van der Waals forces act on one another. The London dispersion forces decay as minus one over r to the sixth. And the twelfth is just a convenient factor for short range. It's, it's the sixth squared, so uh, it's very computationally efficient to do that for large systems. And uh, the and the short range behavior of this is exponential, so it the r to the tw one over r to the twelfth models exponential decay pretty well. All right, so the the interconversion between the various models here, you could derive the parameters based off these virial coefficients for Van der Waals equation of state for virial equation of state, what have you. Uh, if you get the virial coefficient from the van der Waals equation of state, p plus a over v bar squared times v bar minus b equals rt, the second virial coefficient for the van der Waals equation of state is b minus a over rt. So the static value of how much molecular volume is 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 consumed, but then you have it. You have the value of a, the magnitude of the attractions depend on the temperature, much as you see the potential energy depends on the temperature there. Uh, you can also derive the van der Waals parameters A and B from the Leonard-Jones potential, substituting in to this expression and seeing what virial coefficients come out. You have A depends on the value of sigma and on the value of epsilon. So how they attract one another depends on both the size and the strength of attraction whereas the b parameter is just 2 pi Avogadro's number over 3 times our sigma value cubed. So our effective molecular volume is 2 pi Avogadro's number over 3 times sigma cubed, which would be the unit of that would be uh, meters cubed per mole. All right, so that's the basics of how these various functional forms uh, arise, uh, what they do to the virial coefficient, and thus due to the non-ideal behavior of our molar volume as a function of temperature, as a function of the interaction strength, and of the effective molecular size.